All right, we're now on question number five. All right, question number five here. And uh, this is the linear regression problem. Seems like there's always one of those, right? And question number five, um, I just love this problem. Uh, call me a square if you want to. Uh, maybe I'm a statistical nerd. Uh, I don't know. But... Uh, what is a square? A square they call somebody who has the same arm span as height. All right, then you can be some kind of a rectangle. I will get into that later. <clears throat> if your arm span is greater than your height or less than height, they call you something else. Okay. So, actually, I think my arm span is slightly longer than my height because I think I measured for some statistical class one time. All right, so anyways, uh, part A is to describe the relationship between arm span and height for these 12 seniors. And so we see an approximately you know, linear relationship, it looks like. The points would be scattered about a line if we fit a line even though they're not exactly on the line, uh, but maybe not too far from the line. So I said there's a moderately strong positive linear relationship between arm span and height. This is a great review question because you want to get full credit by covering all of those things. Let's look at the rubric here. Four things to cover. One of them, of course, is context. We're going to put context when we answer our questions on the test. But uh, the relationship is approximately linear, so the form, linear or nonlinear, those are on the AP exam the only two answers that you want to even like, go into. Uh, if it's not linear, you, you could maybe guess that it's quadratic or something, that might, and maybe you're right, but you can just say nonlinear in that case. Okay, the relationship is positive, all right, so as one variable increases, so does the other. Negative would uh, be if one variable is increasing, the other is decreasing, and you would see a, a negative slope. All right, so three, it says there is a moderate to strong association. You would not get credit for saying weak. I think I said moderately strong, but you could say strong as well. We don't have a value for R squared, do we? So it's hard to say exactly. So they're a little bit lenient on what they would accept here. And they will accept moderate or strong. And then the responses in context. So I think I covered that one really quickly and easily with my response to that uh, question. All right. So I'm feeling less fearful as I go to the next uh, part and first before they get to the question they say that graph one is let's see which one was which uh, graph one is actually the line of fit here uh, so that's the regression line least squares regression line and you now know the slope of it and you know the y-intercept of it graph two is y equals x Okay, so they're going to define this dot here, and this dot here, and this dot here. Those three uh, senior students have the same height as arm span, uh, both measured in inches. So they are called uh, squares. These people up here on this side of the line, they have longer arm spans than their height. And these people are tall right compared to their arm span because their height is greater than their arm span so we have tall rectangles and short rectangles defined tall rectangle is your arm span is less than your height or your height is greater than your arm span okay so we got one two three four that fit the description of a tall rectangle Ah, uh, now what are you? A tall rectangle, a short rectangle, or a square? Uh, 
Let's see, I think I'm actually a short rectangle. Is that okay to be a short rectangle? All right, so uh, you actually are asked to fill out the table, how many of each of those are, but first they ask you the question, which one is, which graph is most helpful in deciding if a student is a square, a tall rectangle, or a short rectangle, and I was using graph two to describe it uh, because it provides that boundary if you are on the line y equals x, x is height, and y is arm span, then you're a square. All right, so graph two is the correct answer for number one. Uh, you have to do some explaining. I said those along the line y equals x fit the description of a square. Tall rectangles are below the line, and short rectangles are above this line. And then for uh, the last part, you had to make, to make a prediction. And remember, when you put a hat above the y, that means the predicted value of y, not the actual value of y, right? The actual value is how high that dot is. The predicted value of y is actually on the line for graph 1. And like this point here has a rather large positive residual because it's above the predicted value. Uh, maybe that's like 66, call it, right? And then 66 would be predicted here. The actual values here, the distance, vertical distance above or below is called a residual and can be a positive or negative residual. Just to review that idea a little bit. Um, and so we just have to substitute in 61 uh, to make the predicted value. So I had like 60. 2.05 or wherever you want to round that off here. Um, so, all right, so grading rubric wise, the uh, part B to the grading rubric, the line in graph two is selected. I got that right. A reasonable explanation for selecting line, the line in graph two that links the body shapes to the regions de uh, defined by the line is given. The explanation should indicate that square shapes are represented by points on the line. Tall rectangles are below the line, and short rectangles are above the line. I aced that one. All right, three correct counting of body types demonstrated by reporting correct frequencies three, four, and five, or reporting proportions. I don't remember writing proportions, but I do uh, remember getting in three, four, and five, all right? And you have to report those on the table. So I'm not sure if I was supposed to, you know, do something else with three, four, and five. I have three, four, and five and put them on the table. So it's a little unclear to me what number three is exactly about correct counting. I guess I did count correctly. I did count up to three, four, and five, and I did report them on the table. So perhaps I did take care of three and four. All right. And then there actually is a part C to the grading rubric, believe it or not. What else could they be looking for? All right. So Correct formula for predicting arm span was 61 inserted. Oh, you'd have to show a little work right here. So what they're getting at, All right? Not just the correct uh, answer, correct value for the predicted arm span. All right, so 62.0. Uh, Got to round off somewhere. And then units for the predicted arm span given as inches. Units. Did I say inches? Yes, I did. That would really suck to go from a score of four for this question to three because you didn't put inches. So put the units on your answers for the stats test. Got it? All right, so hopefully you're out there and tuning into these videos to pick up those tips.
are any value for the predicted arm span. It says between 61.5 and 62.5 is acceptable. Wow. Maybe somebody isn't using the equation, then maybe they're using the graph to make that estimation. Values outside the interval do not satisfy. So this is component two. All right, correct value for the predicted arm span. Or if you're wondering about how accurate to round off, then I guess it doesn't much matter. 62.0 would be fine. There's one more question to go.